What is happening all you YouTube warriors out there? Range Day Bro back at it again and today I have a great one for you. One of my favorite all-time builds. My favorite truck gun slash backpack gun coming right at you. Let's check it out. She begging me to call after this. Thank you guys for coming back to the channel. If it's your first time here, please subscribe to the channel. I'm a new guy starting out and I'm trying to build up a little bit of a following. If you like this video, if you enjoy it, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out and I would greatly appreciate it. But without further ado, let's get into this build, tip to butt, Garand thumb style, and go over what exactly I have in it so that if you're interested in building a 300 blackout truck gun and or backpack gun, um, you can take my mistakes and or my successes and put them into your own build yourself. So with that being said, let's start up here at the tip where we have a dead air chemo micro brake on here. So it's a micro brake. So their regular brake is a three chamber brake, which comes with their dead air Sandman. And I have some of those on my uh, AR-10 builds. But on this guy for the short boy, I wanted a micro and that's what we have here. Behind that are some shims that they send them with so you can time it. It uses a taper design, and uh, I'm not doing a video on this brake specifically, but when I get my suppressors in, if you guys wanna see it, I can do a whole video on, on this brake in, this, in the Dead Air Sandman S. But uh, moving back from there, that is attached to a Ballistic Advantage Hansen Profile 10.5 um, inch 300 blackout barrel. And that barrel I bought from Big Daddy Unlimited actually came with a gas block and it came with a pin. So the barrel was actually drilled and uh, it came with a pin for the gas block itself. The gas block was also drilled so that I could pin my gas block. Those of you guys who aren't really into the world of building uh, ARs yet um, may not realize this, but there's really three ways to secure a gas block to a barrel and someone may correct me out there, but pretty much the three ways I know of is the most common is just by two set screws. And uh, with those set screws, some people may have a dimpling jig like the SLR Rifle Works jig that I have here, which gives you the option to pretty much drill a little divot into the barrel where that set screw is gonna go, making it more of a bomb proof design. Um, so their set screws, most people don't dimple their barrels. Just driving those set screws down with a proper set screw torque, I've been told is, is strong enough, but even on those, I would dimple my barrels. That's why I invested in that jig there. The second way is there's a clamp design where the gas lock actually has uh, screws going through the side. It never actually touches the barrel at all, but instead it actually tightens down and clamps around the barrel. Never owned one of those, so I can't really speak to that. And then the third way is a pin gas block. And a pin gas block also usually has set screws in it as well um, to, to just aid in driving that pin through. But what I did when I installed this, I threw that gas block on and then I tightened down my set screws and then I drove my, my pin through for the uh, pin gas block. And that is, in my opinion, the most bomb proof way to install them. Now, I personally use rock set on my set screws as well, but this isn't a video on how to install gas blocks. So I digress. Let's move on to the rail, which is my particularly my favorite part of the gun. Uh, this is the Geisley MK4 Mark IV, and this is the 9.3 inch variant in their desert dirt color. I love this. I love this rail. It is kind of the heart, and it gave me the look that I was going for with this uh, pistol build. So with this, it is M-Lock, but also the Mark IV features uh, built-in, machined-in Picatinny rail sections up here at the front. And at the three o'clock and the nine o'clock position, there's also some QD cups for slings if you like running your slings at the front of your rails. So I love it. Um, it is a bomb-proof design. Uh, if anyone has ever used or installed a Geisley rail, you know the tolerances are super tight with the barrel nut uh, and the way this mounts up. They're extremely tight. In fact, I put, had to put oil on mine just to get it to slide on nicely, but um, it is just a super bomb-proof design and it has these anti-rotation tabs down here, which have two set screws in them, which allow you to drive those into the upper receiver and stop that from rotating at all. So you're gonna be able to retain zero if you're running any kind of lasers and things of that sort. And on the rail, I just have some cheap BCM M-Lock rail covers, but I love them. They look good, they feel good. For the price, you can't beat them. Sometimes you can find them for only $10 and they come with five. Um, I did have to trim some of these up, uh, but trim them up. They look good, they look great. Going up from there on the top here, my front uh, sight post is a Midwest Industries HK style front sight. So it's got that little U in it, um, reminiscent of the HK irons. I love that, it was super affordable. I think it was under $50 from Big Daddy Unlimited. And it looks great and it's well built, well machined. Couldn't be happier with it. And then behind that is my favorite light of all time. Although expensive, buy once, cry once. 
I have the OWL Cloud Defensive uh, OWL on here. OWL stands for Optimized Weapon Light. And what it does is it has the pressure pad built into the flashlight right here on top. So when you're gripping the gun and you have your thumb up top, you can just boom, press the, press the OWL on momentary if you click and hold and then you could just click it and leave it on. 16,000 Candela, this one is in the Callahan Camo uh, colorway. Also got this from Big Daddy Unlimited. I am a huge fan of Big Daddy Unlimited if you haven't noticed. If you're building ARs, it is worth it. If you're not, you might wanna cancel your subscription. There's no cancellation fee, but um, if you're building, it's, it is 100% worth it. Moving back from the Owl, um, just talk about the rail once again. All milled out, ported out for weight savings and airflow as well. So on the top here, you have M-Lock in between at the 45 degree angles. So you have M-Lock on both of the top halves, but on the bottom half, you just have some porting for, for airflow uh, so that your barrel will stay cool. Huge fan of the rail, and then also that light. <laughs> Obviously, it's a huge, I'm a huge fan of everything on this, otherwise I wouldn't have bought it. But going back from there, we have the EOTech EXPS 3-0. The 3 meaning night vision compatible, as you see the night vision button here. The E in that meaning the quick detach lever mount. And that also indicates that it's a lower one-third uh, optic. So your irons will be in the lower one-third of your sight picture, which I really enjoy. And then getting back from there, I have my Magpul MBUS Pro folding rear sight. And this guy, when you fold it down, it just disappears into the gun. It looks like it's built into the upper receiver. That's why I love it. Uh, toolless adjustments and things like that. But I love the way it looks on here. And when I throw my magnifier on here from my uh, Mark 18, it just goes right over the top because of how flat it lays and I, and I love that. So moving back from there, we have the Radian Raptor. This is the LT, which means it's their light version. These are polymer polymer handles on this guy, but it is in the peanut butter configuration. It's a little bit cheaper. I think it saved like $20 if you go with the polymer version. So that's nice. And that is all built into the Aero Precision Upper, which features the threaded pin for your forward assist which is very nice when you're installing your forward assist. You don't have to beat a pin while holding spring pressure. It makes things a little bit easier. Now inside of that, at the heart of the rifle, or the pistol rather, is the bolt carrier group. And this guy is the BCM bolt carrier group. Hands down, I think most people would agree that um, BCM has one of the best, if not the best bolt carrier group on the market for building your own um, ARs at home. Never had an issue out of the BCM, don't ever expect to, and there's not much to be said about that. There's plenty of videos out there on the durability on that. Also, just worth mentioning if you're a new builder, um, although this is a 300 blackout barrel, this bolt carrier group can work on 5.56 as well, and so can the magazines. Now, I do have a 300 blackout specific magazine in here currently, but um, 5.56 magazines will feed 300 blackout, and you don't have to change your BCG either. It'll work. Moving on from there, uh, one of my favorite parts of the pistol is going to be the Silencer Co. Ambidextrous Billet Lower. Uh, it's almost completely ambidextrous besides the uh, magazine release. Uh, you could put an ambi magazine release in here. It does have a little shelf machined into the lower to protect an ambidextrous magazine release. One of the, my favorite parts about this entire build is the ambidextrous bolt release here that we have on the Silencer Co. Lower. And it is actually one piece indeed with the other side, it's just got a little piece cut out of the lower receiver, allowing this guy to come through to the right hand side of the gun. And that way I can just hold that guy up, lock my bolt to the rear like so. And then when I'm doing a tactical reload, I can go ahead and throw my mag in and just drop the bolt forward with this index finger and then go right back onto the gun and, and go right back to work. Done some shooting drills with friends who don't have a lower like this and I smoke them every time. Even if I really screw up uh, my reload and I miss this massive magazine well, which we'll get into here in a second. Even if I miss, um, I usually still beat them because of that ambidextrous bolt release. And it's built right in, um, and it doesn't impede your trigger finger. I've never owned a bad lever. I've thought about buying the Magpul bad lever, which uh, just attaches to your bolt release over here and comes down into your trigger, trigger guard here. I thought about buying them before, never actually pulled the trigger, no pun intended, um, on that purchase because I've heard mixed reviews about it. But this is one of my favorite things um, on a lower receiver. I've never actually owned a Radian weapon systems lower, but I imagine that's what that's uh, similar to or competing with. But the Silencer Co. lower receiver is just, it's just top, top notch quality and uh, also has machined QD cups in the back here, um, which in my opinion are unnecessary. There's tons of QD points on this uh, pistol, but it's not a bad feature to have if you don't have a QD end plate here 
or QDs built into your brace and or stock. So it's not a bad thing, but for reasons we'll get into in a second, I don't like it there. Um, but before I move back on to the Law Tactical Folder, I have a Radian ambidextrous selector in here, uh, Radian Raptor selector switch, and I have it configured to the 45 degree throw. You could change that very easily when you're installing it. And I do like that there's one side that's longer and one side that is shorter. So I have the short side on my uh, right hand side so it's not hitting my index finger. Below that I have a Geisley Super Dynamic 3 gun trigger in it. It is the flat faced uh, single stage trigger. This trigger is really, really nice. If I ghost it with you, we are clear. Safety off. There's really no take up on this guy at all. Boom, brakes, and then super short reset. So it is a competition trigger. It does ship with two springs, um, so you could change the spring weight on it if you wanted to, from a four and a half pound to a three and a half pound trigger pull. Um, I have the four and a half pound in here because this is a truck slash self-defense type gun. I'm not using this for competition, so that's why I have that spring. Moving back from there, the reason this is the ultimate compact uh, truck gun that it is, and backpack gun, is because of the Law Tactical Folder. Now while this adds some overall length to the pistol, which cannot be removed, when you completely collapse your stock and or brace. Um, what it does allow you to do is then fold the buffer tube out of the way, which is not able to be done on any other uh, AR platform like the Daniel Defense, and it allows you to fold it to the side, making it extremely compact, and this is what it looks like folded. As you can see, it just brings the overall length down really short so that you could then throw it in a backpack, which I have my everyday carry backpack here. Now this isn't the most gray man uh, of backpacks there is. It's a Condor, definitely very much tactical. You see when I throw it in here, it just disappears into the backpack and then boom, you can be on your merry way. Zip it on up and I have a solution for this loose sling here, uh, which I'll show you guys here in a second, but, and then you're good to go. With that being said, that's how easily it fits. And let me show you real quick what I mean by a solution for this loose sling here. Boom, voila, abracadabra, here we are. Uh, this is what I call my tactical hair tie. Uh, just like my DIY Home Depot garage storage hooks like for hoses and tools behind me here, I like to find cheap options I have laying around the house to make things more efficient. And this is just one of the things that I stole from my girl. It's just a regular hair tie. You could buy them for like pennies um, or just find them on the street randomly or just ask a friend if you don't have a girlfriend or just go to Walgreens and buy them for super cheap. But you just fold up your sling like so and it keeps it nice and nice and tidy while it's in a pack so that it doesn't get in the way, doesn't get caught or snagged on anything while you're, while you're pulling it out of the pack. And the beautiful part about this in the Law of Tactical Folder configuration is that when I go to unfold this, boom, it just pops the sling right out like that and you're good to go, throw it on and go to work. So. I'm a huge fan of that. Um, I do that with all my slings when I have to put these in a situation where I may need to draw them quickly from a bag. So that's a real quick and cheap, easy way. Just using a real simple thing you may have laying around the house, like a hair tie. Obviously you could use rubber band as well. These tend to work good because they slide easily on and off the sling. So I like that. Moving on from there guys, that's pretty much the entire build. Um, if I missed anything or you wanna see a review on anything specifically in this guy, please let me know down in the comments. All right guys, so once again, I'm a new channel. I really appreciate you guys being here. If it's your first time, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And I look forward to doing more reviews for you guys in the future. If you are here for the first time and you're not subscribed, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you like this content, I will keep these videos pumping out. Let me know what you want to see reviewed down in the comments. And until next time, be safe, stay dangerous. Range Day Bro, out.